What's going on, Gaming Nation? We are back with another episode presented by Phantoms Anonymous. We have another great show, as always, or at least from this time of year. We are talking about the upcoming and highly anticipated event called E3. I'm sure a few of you may be familiar with it. I don't know. I might keep that on the low a little bit. Or not. Probably the biggest thing that's going to happen all year. So, of course, we're talking yeah. about <laughs> it's coming up, so we got more in store. That we want to cover. We covered last week a few a few uh, games. This week we got a couple more, or a few more, depending on your definition of couple and a few. So let's go ahead and get that started. Going to go ahead and introduce the panelists. Got my main man, Daryl. What's up, brother? Man, what up, guys? Let's get it. That's right. And Dan, how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. I'm happy to be back. And I just wanted to point out that E3 was the show that brought us together, got me into this. So I'm super excited mm -hmm. to be here. And it's almost like a one year anniversary, guys. So that's true. Great job. Let's get it. Let's definitely stay tuned for that. You know, subscribe for the channel and uh, get notifications for that because we will be doing an anniversary episode on that particular front. And because of his constant appearances, I don't want to call him a sub panelist or a guest panelist anymore. I'm going to call him a core panelist because why not? Welcome to the show, Spotty Butt. Woo -woo. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Get this show started Welcome. all right, all right. Welcome to the family. To the fam. Hey. You're my cousin. <laughs> from, from Is this through marriage or by adoption? Second removed um. at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host from the show, Clay from Tales of the Blade. Kill that intro. All right, so today on today's show, we're going to cover three more games that we're going to be uh, ta looking forward to and highly really highly anticipating at E3. So first and foremost, we're going to get started. A game that we've all seen a couple times in the making, and I'm actually very excited about it. I haven't been this excited for this particular franchise in quite some time. But ladies and gentlemen, Spider-Man is getting a new look, he's getting a new game, and it's going to be off the chain. And not the chain that you currently see me with the Blades of Chaos. So let's get, go. let's get some information from our panelists. Daryl, how are you feeling about some of this trailer, and what are you most anticipating to look for when it comes to Spider-Man at E3? Okay, now I'm going to say something. Don't get upset with me, people, okay? When I right. say this. Okay. But when you first play, when I first seen the trailer, you didn't remind you of Watch Dogs? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, okay. When I first saw playing it, you know, I know Watch Dogs got a bad name, so I didn't want nobody to cut my head off. <laughs> I mean, but when I first. <laughs> it's just not that bad. It really is. I like the Watch Dogs. I actually like Watch Dogs. I, like I don't know why people hate it so much. I actually love Watch Dogs. I mean, he had a, he had a good story, but mm -hmm. you know what? We're not talking about Watch Dogs. Nope. We're talking about Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when I seen him, you know, how he was in the little skylight and he seen the enemies coming and he was using his different environments, his advantage. I mean, I got that feeling and I like it. And, you know, I like games, you know, require stealth. Yep. And it looks like you can do a lot of stuff in this game. Man, I'm excited. And then it's just like the, the graphics looks amazing. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be a great Spider-Man game. I completely concur with everything you just said. To the T. I mean, let's just be honest. It, it does. It looks amazing. It looks phenomenal. I can't wait to play it. And it's Damn. a single-player game. Single-player game is doing good right now. Okay? Absolutely. Single-player games are doing great. War, with a successful Guard of War, I think this game... It's just going to, you know, keep that hype going with single-player games. I completely agree. Dan, how about you, man? Oh, man, with the way the Marvel Universe is going, and we needed a game like this, guys, because it's been a minute since we've had a really great Marvel game that wasn't like a fighting-style game. You know, I feel like every year there's always Marvel vs. Capcom or something like that. Um, but this is the game that I've been anticipating for years. I know when they, they popped off the Amazing Spider-Man 2 game, I actually bought that and I, I did have some fun with it. There were a few technical issues that I, I wish they they would have changed, but now they get a whole new restart with this game and man, it looks amazing. I, I love the open world. Um, the fighting combat kind of reminds me of like a, a Batman Arkham Asylum kind mm -hmm. of style, yeah. like how you're 
you're like yeah. popping up on people and i love it like I've, I've always said that like we need we need a marvel game like that like we, we need a ba game where you're like i mean and you're spider-man too so you can kind of do that batman like i'm gonna sneak up on you pop down with my web and kick your butt types thing so i love it um i am hoping though that there is some time and I bet there isn't, but I hope there is some type of um, Avenger action in there. Or, you know, a little bit of reference to Infinity War. Do we get a bonus scene where Spider-Man's like, I don't want to go, Tony. Come on, <laughs> give it to me. I would love it. Um, I, I think it's pretty cool. And you never know if they start giving us good Spider-Man. Maybe they give us a cool Thor game. Maybe they give us a cool Iron Man game. Shoot, maybe they'll just give us an Infinity War game. You know, like it. This is a good start. Um, I hope that they kill it. Hopefully, it gets at least an eight or a nine on the reviews, and the fans actually go and pick it up and support it. Because you never know, guys. And that's where it starts. It, it starts with a good game, then it starts with the fans and the supporters getting behind it. And who knows, man? Maybe we could get the ultimate game we're dreaming of. That's true, and I just want to point out real quickly to all the, uh, the the listeners out there who may may not have seen Infinity War yet. I I I sympathize, I truly do, but let's face it, it's been a month. If you haven't seen it by now, you're going to run into spoilers all over the place. It's going to happen, so mm -hmm. you can guarantee this is going to be some on this show. And I I <laughs> I wish I could be a little bit more sympathetic, but at this point in time, you no. Know. <laughs> but, Spotty, how about you, man? What are you looking forward to with uh, Spider-Man coming up? I got to agree that it felt really close to what Batman felt like when I first started playing the Batman games. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw like some of the prompts come up and popping up and using the environment to do combos and stuff, I honestly felt like it was uh, uh, Marvel's answer to the Arkham series and the Arkhamverse. Uh, mm. On top of that, I really like the fast-paced gameplay that I saw for, like, web-slinging and just go traversing the town. It looks like it's going to be a lot more uh, fluid and uh, finesseful than driving that freight train on ice that we call the Batmobile. <laughs> wow, that was I'm salty. I'm not going to lie, I did not... I, I'm not going to lie, I did not like the Batmobile mechanics from... Uh, uh, the latest Batman game. I hated how saturated it was, but honestly, it, it did make for a pretty fun game, just driving around that big tank. But, but it's Batman. It, Batman. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> so all in all, I'm looking, there, there's a lot of good things that could come of this. Uh, only time will tell, of course, and we'll see more at, at E3 when it comes around as to what we can expect fully from this particular game, and uh, it's it's looking fantastic. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, and it sounds like the rest of us here at Gaming Nation are, but we're moving on to the next game. This is actually more of a, uh, I don't want to say philosophical, but rather uh, from a business standpoint, what we can expect from the trend of games, so to speak. And that is, there were two games that were mentioned that are looking to follow up in sort of the same shadow or aspect of Another game that we're familiar with, which is, of course, Destiny 2 and how popular it's been. Um, we know that, uh, in particular, one of the games, D The Division, was really well hyped. And then it kind of fell short on delivery in terms of overall lengthy content, which, of course, is the kind of death of MMOs, which Destiny 2 is currently experiencing. But... Another game that was also mentioned that's looking to kind of come in and steal some of that thunder, even take the mantle, is Anthem. And do we think that these games honestly have a chance? Because even though it is a dying franchise until the, the devs decide to really pick it up, is Destiny 2 really so far gone that a game or games like The Division or Anthem even have a chance to pick up on that hype? What do you think, Daryl? Um, I think the, I mean, um, Destiny has hurt a lot of players. Okay, and okay. that's what happens when a game hurt gets hurt really, really bad. It does hurt other games in it, in that sort of um j genre. Right. So, and like you said with the division, division to me, I have fun with division, but like I said, it like, but like you said, it did lack the content. 
because I, I remember one time I, I was playing the vision and one of my friends said, Inferno, how far are you along? And I was like, oh, I'm not nowhere near done. And he said, you sure? He said, we've been playing about the same length of time. And he told me where to go and see how much progress I got. And I was almost like, you know, real far along in the game. And I didn't know it. And even when I finished the game, I was like, what? Like, uh, it, it just, it's just shocking because that's it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't even know. So I think, you know, if the game can work on the content, it needs it. It needs the content. And that goes with all these Battle Royale styles. You feel like that's the way to go now. Everybody want to go with Battle Royale. So I think that's what it's going to eventually probably end up doing. And I think it's going to, um, you know, it's going to die down because it's going to do the Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. I believe Division is going to end up doing it. I believe Death is going to go that route because we see Call of Duty is going that route already. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I believe it's going to end up dying. That's what I believe. I, I believe it's going to die. They're going to try it, but they're going to focus more on the Battle Royale because it's a cash cow. So they're going to focus more on that. And people are just going to go to the ones where they know. And that's what Fortnite Port, uh, and PUBG and H1Z1. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's a very, very plausible concept. How about you, Spotty? Personally, I don't think that The Division w really has the type of sci-fi content that Destiny and Anthem has to really mm -hmm. compete in the same uh, boat that they do. I think Anthem, with its high sci-fi content, like up in outer space sci-fi stuff, has a better chance of taking on Destiny in that same uh, category. Destiny, need, Destiny 2, its next expansion needs to be at least as good as or better than the Taken King for it to actually drag the back up out of the rut that it's currently in because these past two expansions, I'm not going to lie, they, they've been less than satisfactory. I completely agree. Dan, how about you? You know what? I, I agree with uh, both of the guys. I feel like in life, especially in this industry, in the music industry, everything, you're only as good as your last move. And if, you're, if your last move is kind of mediocre, the people are going to look at you and be like, oh, they're on the decline, you know? So really it's about what can we do to enhance our games now? And I loved what Daryl said about, yo, everyone's trying to do this Battle Royale style. And I'm not saying they have to do that, but obviously they have to do something to compete with the new market. Now, I'm not saying they totally switch up the style. Maybe it's just a, some little thing. But if you're in a rut, if Destiny's in a rut and they need something new, it's about what are we going to do with this next game? And this next game that we push has to be good because we're going to get forgotten about and we're going to be out of a job in a few years if we don't get this under our wings or we're going to be working on a brand new project because Destiny used to be like one of the hottest games a couple years ago and now it's really losing its fire. It's losing its, its edge. So how do they bring it back and get to the next level they're gonna have to try some new concepts now maybe it's battle royale maybe it's not maybe they they come up with something new that no one's thought of before um i'm not for sure on what that would be but definitely they're gonna have to do something new and refreshing to bring people back no definitely that's um actually a very good point and it, i don't know how true this was because of a couple of different factors but there was actually a sort of memo that was leaked about the events that we can expect at E3 and one of them was a potential Destiny 2 expansion called Shadows of Okinawa okay so there's a possibility in that but I immediately looked to debunk this particular uh, thing because of uh, what we talked about on last week's show which is uh, how Bloodborne 2 is likely not going to be a thing even though people keep, it seems like that memo was released and then right after it was leaked quote unquote it seemed like all these videos kind of popped up that were saying oh well it's it might be bloodborne 2 hey bloodborne 2 bloodborne 2 but it actually very likely <laughs> is kuon 2 which again is from the ps2 days um so oh. is, is is a possibility in that also there's a possibility where they were that they're reviving the tenchu ip so we'll see what happens with that as well 
but this is not about that. Uh, I actually definitely think that Anthem and the Division, if they learn from their mistakes, well, not necessarily Anthem, but if the Division learn from their mistakes and look at their in-game content and their last ability, then they do have a strong chance of competing with Destiny because D- Division was it was a fresh idea, it was a great idea. This execution mm-hmm. was a little off, but again, if they learn from it, if they can pick up on it, it will be good. It will be something that we can that players can look forward to. It will be something that players can really get into and enjoy. But it's going to have to be something that they really work at. Um, as far as Anthem is concerned, I really like the concept of that because it's sort of a, a mech-based, you know, like like first person, like a third person game. It's, it's not even first person; it's third person, and. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a really interesting concept in the fact that uh, you know it's it's basically almost like sort of personal mobile suit like frog suit like we used to see in MechWarrior, um, meeting almost what looks to be Mass Effect game style gameplay, which of course I really enjoyed Andromeda. I thought that that idea was particularly nice and what they did with that they did a great job with, um, but they're was a little bit to be desired in the end, and, well, well, that's a whole other story. Uh, <laughs> but I think that definitely if the Division and Anthem learn anything from what the successes and paths of other games that they're competing with, I think they'll do a really good job with that. Last but not least, I really wanted to include this game because there was definitely a ton of rumors that we would see something finally really nice and meaty, uh, pertaining to this particular title, so we'll see what happens. Rockstar, don't let Daryl down. Red Dead Redemption oh. 2. <laughs> I won't even talk about this one off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and hand this one immediately over to Daryl, because I know he wants to gab on about this. Daryl, go for it. Man, okay. Rockstar, if anybody can do something, I trust Rockstar, okay? Now, we know Rockstar is going to probably, you know, doing the Battle Royale style also. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I, I won't count Rockstar out. Rockstar just does well with everything they touch. I mean, you know, you know, I would call Rockstar Midas. Anything they touch turns to gold. So mm-hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm happy about it. You know, so but I do know they're gonna focus on the single player also. So we've seen the, the, the trailers. I mean, I'm excited about this game. I'm really excited. I'm really wondering what's going on because I think in one of the trailers we seen John Marston. So yep. I want to know how that story plays out. I want to know the three characters we're going to be using because I think we're going to be using three. So, I mean, it just, it's just so many questions that I want to answer. But I don't think I'm going to get them answered in E3. You know, I'm going to wish for it. But I, I mean, don't think I'm going to get anything else. You just <laughs> might simply because of the fact that they are looking at a spring uh, release. And because we are so late into spring as it is there is a strong possibility that we're going to be getting quite a bit of good gameplay. Dan, how about you? I know you've been talking about this one too, man. Man, Red Dead Redemption, bud. Got my rifle ready and everything. It's going down. <laughs> um, I'm super excited. If they don't if they don't give if they don't give me something, man, we're going to have to take a trip. Me and Daryl, we're going to have to go to Rockstar, man, because this needs to happen. I'm too excited. This is one of the games. When it drops, I'm getting it. I, I love the first one, and we're super excited for the the sequel. Um, the cool thing about it is we don't know exactly what we're getting um, with it. Um, the gameplay looks pretty cool, but I, I want more. I need to see more. I, I just want to play it. Um, I... I'm super excited to see it, and I'm wondering what kind of cool little treats Rockstar has in store for us this year. Because, like Daryl said, they're working on some other things, the um, other projects, but this is the one right now, and this is this is the one that I want. No pun intended to a Grease reference, but this is the one I want. <laughs> Give it to me. Let's go. Love it. Spotty, bud. How about you, man? I'll be honest. I've got nothing because I never played any of the uh, Redemption games or the Red Dead Revolver. I didn't play any of it. So I really have nothing to say on Red Dead Redemption 2 other than I know Rockstar is going to produce a really good game because they're just that damn good at it. 
I agree. I agree. But since you don't know anything about that, uh, Spotty Butt, it's been nice knowing you. Take care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go crawl back under my rock. No, oh, you're good, brah. <laughs> so, but it's a nice rock. It is a lovely rock. It rocks. Okay, uh -huh. Patrick. Oh, 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 oh Patrick. <laughs> Okay, I'll just put it under my rock again. Okay. <laughs> and that's really it for this for this particular show on uh, what we're expecting from these games. I think uh, Rockstar is definitely going to bring it uh, this year if they do decide to bring any sort of gameplay at all uh, from Red Dead Redemption 2 because, uh, like we said before, Rockstar does some great games. They really do. There's no denying that Rockstar is capable of phenomenal stuff as long as they, you know, they work at it and they do what well what they do and so I think there's definitely something that we're gonna get there um, I can't wait E3 I cannot wait June to, uh, 12th to the 14th um, it's gonna be fantastic and I really look forward to seeing a lot of what the content has to display there so of course even all, all, of, all of our listeners out there that you guys can look forward to it and let us know in the comment section below what you guys are expecting, what you are anticipating. We really want to hear from you, of course. But that's going to do it for, our t for today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank everybody, all the panelists, for coming out and voicing their opinions and you know, giving us the rundown of what they can expect from the biggest show all year long. But, of course, it's time for our coming up segment, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Spotty first. Man, what you're coming up for this week? Uh, I don't really know. I've not been paying attention to a lot of things. I've been busy with work lately. All right, Spotty, have a great one. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dump, bum, yeah, bum, inventory's bum. coming up, so that's about how that's going. Yay, inventory. Don't remind me. Okay, Dan, how about you, man? I got three words. Jurassic World Evolution. Do they it. They finally gave us a game where we get to have a simulation of our own Jurassic World. How cool does that sound? Now, you know, we're we're all roughly around the same age, you know, where it's like, did, did you guys grow up with, like, the Roller Coaster Tycoon game and those yes. fun games? Yes. Now, yeah. give me... Give me a Jurassic World one. So like I'm I'm super excited because like remember where there was a feature in the roller coaster game where you could like break the roller yeah. coaster and just kill yeah. everybody? Well like <laughs> now we get the ultimate like I get T Rexes and and Velociraptors. Like what's gonna happen here? I mean, this game could be very cool. It could be very stupid, but I'm I mean I love the Jurassic series. I also love like the original Jurassic Park, even the new Jurassic World. I'm gonna go see the new one when it comes out. So when I saw this game was coming out, I was like, okay, I see you. I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be cool. Absolutely. But then, then the point of the uh, the game is to for people to enjoy, not to kill everybody. Okay, so, so, something is really wrong with you. Okay, well, you I should do things like that. And, 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 <laughs> Dan, and Dan's defense to that. He'll be enjoying killing them, so someone's getting enjoyment out of it. I'm just saying. There is joy to be had. No, even though I might do the same thing you're doing, it's still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two wrongs don't make a right. Heard that. Three lefts yeah, do, three lefts do. There you go. Daryl, how about it, man? Well, okay. I got it coming up, but I'm not for sure if I want it, so I'm going to get y'all thoughts. Okay, Black Ops 4, no single player. Okay, I've been looking to it, and it doesn't have a, a campaign. It, it's just focused on multiplayer, so I don't know if I want it because I love campaign. I love the story. But I've been looking into it. It looks good because I think they're focusing heavily on the multiplayer. But what do y'all think about that? I'm boycotting hmm. Black Ops 4 because there is no uh, single player. Yeah, see, I feel the same way. I mean, come on now. I mean... Why would you take out the campaign? That's that, that's a you're taking away some of your fans who enjoy single player and multiplayer. I think you're picking the side, and I don't think that's right. You pick hmm. the side. You, you pick the multiplayer side, and that's not right. So I, I, I mean, uh, I liked it, but I don't know if I want it now because there's no single player. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to get this game, but I would like to see, you know, usually when you take something away, you add something, you know, so I'm kind of, um, I'm on the edge here, uh, 
of seeing are they going to up the ante with the multiplayer then? Are they going to give us some crazy multiplayer mode that's almost like a campaign mission or something? Because, nope. like... Just, just giving us all um, battle royale, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So we're, I mean, and that might be what it is, you know, that instead of instead of us pumping all of our memory and, and time into the disc or the download, that single player, we're just going to give you a full immersive world of multiplayer. Um, I don't, no, I'm not going to be fully against it until I see, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a Call of Duty fan anyways, like I don't really play that game, but, you know, for the new generation that's into these Battle Royale games, maybe that's what they want and call of duty i think i think it started to die a couple years ago tell me if i'm wrong but uh more and more kids are jumping onto the fortnites and the PUBG style games so i mean maybe they had to make a move maybe there's evidence to show that people aren't playing their single player like they used to and it's all about multiplayer now um i i can see some signs saying that's true because I got I got buddies that literally all they do all day is play Fortnite and they they don't play any campaign or anything like that because it's just you log on and and you, you build forts and you shoot each other so maybe that's the trend that's happening next. That's well, right. Hopefully we can see some more in E3. I mean, so I'm just gonna wait to E3, but you know that's my coming up. That's all right. And in mind for that's this, a good one though. Mine for this week is actually going to be another thing that we're going to see at E3, um, and I'm, I'm sure we will anyway. And we'll actually cover on next week's episode, but that's Shadows of Satsuma. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> and of course, it's a uh, it's a uh, another action RPG that's centered around uh, Japan during the Mongol invasion. So that should be very interesting, um, especially with the success of Neo in uh, games like that. So maybe we see another demand for certain titles. And some of the trailers just look insane. So I cannot wait to see that as well. But that's gonna do it for our show, ladies and gentlemen. Daryl, where can we find you, my friend? You can find me on the Family's Numbers page, Family Numbers YouTube channel, and a gaming and I'm, uh, Sorry, Game of Nine is YouTube on channel and page. That's right. Dan, how about it? Yo, y'all can find me at the fan club on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Musically. I just, just started there at Musically. If you don't know what that is, check out Musically. But hey, thank you guys so much, man. Y'all y'all have a good one. And Spotty. Uh, you can find me wherever you can find Clay. <laughs> Play, gaming nation, stuff like that. That's a little creepy, bro. Yeah, it's, it's a little creepy. Are you in my house right now? Are you sitting? Oh, hi, Spotty. There you are. Hey, what's up, bro? Okay. I'm under your sink, Clay. Whoa. <laughs> I was hiding in the refrigerator. Hiya, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't hide there too long, it might flood. Alright, and of right. course, I am Clay from Tales of the Blade. You can find me on the Tales of the Blade YouTube and Facebook page. Also on the Gaming Nation Fandom Anonymous Facebook and YouTube page. And, well, you know, right here on this particular segment. I already said that, in a way. But if you didn't know who we are, we are Fandom Anonymous. That's F-A-N-D-O-M-S, A-O-N-O-N, Y-M-O-U-S. Tripped on that. You can find us all over social media right now. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and, yeah, that's it. You guys come over here to the Facebook page where we have the uh, these discussions every single day. We'd love to have you. We'd love to hear your opinions. So, of course, subscribe and share the channel. And if there's anything else, thanks for listening and have a good one. Always. Yeah, my always a lot. Always, yep. All right. Especially me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're culprit number one for that one, brother. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. I ain't, I ain't mad. Me either, bud. I know. I know the game. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost the game. Oh, come on. We'll pick that controller back up, bud. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get him started. Let's get it, boys. I'm excited. Ooh, ah, la, 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 la. Beep, 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 beep.
E3, E3, E3. <laughs> Electronic Entertainment Expo. The place everyone Spider wants to go. <laughs> Dude, I... I uh, I hope in the new Spider-Man game there's like a bonus scene where he's like, Tony, no, don't go. I don't oh want no, to leave. no, no, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that, Dan? Well, I haven't even started the show yet. You're oh, come on. I mean, I mean, I just wanted to let you know for what's coming, bud. Spoiler alert. Everybody! Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> One of my favorite spoiler memes. Uh, Deadpool comes up and vacuums up uh, Spider-Man. I saw that. I saw that. He's like, don't worry, I got it. I haven't seen that one. Oh, <laughs> that God. That pretty funny. Why do I hang out with these people? Alright. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. another one he's singing, another one bites the dust, and, and Iron Man's sitting there like, what the heck, dude? All right, all right, all right. Silence okay. on the silence on the front. Jeez.